Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage. Day three, where the show is really cranking. We still got the adrenaline pumping. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube with Savannah Peterson, Dave Vellante, Kristen, Nicole Martin. We've all been here on the ground getting all the data, uh, a lot of action. Obviously, it's an AI show, high performance computing, and it's really evolved. And you can see the clear lines of sight into how the cloud's going to play into it, how the data center is going to erupt in huge opportunities as the large supercomputing is coming to the masses. And Sid is back on the Cube. He was in our studio for our AI NYSE Wired community event. He's back, founder and CEO of D Matrix. Sid, great to see you. Yeah, yeah I'm Thanks back. For coming back Pleasure. on. Pleasure to be back. Thank you for having me. So, um, first of all, I remember the conversation we had in Palo Alto at our um, event, uh, AI leaders you were on. You were talking, setting the table for how the data center is going to change significantly, um, making AI inference affordable, making yeah. them scale, changing the architecture. You got a lot of funding in 2023. Yep. Now you launched here at Supercomputing. That's right. Okay, let's get right to the hard news first, and we'll get into kind of what we talked about and kind of the underlying uh, uh, scale. But what's the news? Give the D Matrix. What's the company do, and what's the news? Well, uh, we are super excited yeah. at Supercompute to announce the world's most efficient AI computing accelerator for inference. And, um, you know, we built this product um, with inference and inference only in mind. So we, you know, when we started the company back in 2019, uh, we essentially looked at, you know, the landscape of AI compute out there and made a bet that, uh, Inference computing would be the largest computing opportunity of our lifetime because for obvious reasons, I mean, you can train models only so many times and then you got to deploy them, operationalize, uh, help businesses operationalize with the help of AI. And uh, that all requires inference. Uh, the leap of faith, you know, at the time, of course, was this was 2019, it was not very clear when we would have the big watershed moment in AI and that happened in 22 yeah. with ChatGPT and then uh, as soon as we went past that moment, everyone the world over was talking about what does it really take to deploy really fast inference and cost you know effective inference right and dmatrix as a company is really built for uh, generative ai inference being done very quickly very fast so we talk about three key things that we focus on one is it's all about doing more with less so doing more inference in less time doing more inference with less dollars, doing more inference with less power, less energy. So uh, the more with less paradigm is really what efficiency is all about. And uh, we have built a computing platform that is efficient on all fronts, uh, whether it is energy efficiency, cost efficiency, or uh, you know speed efficiency. Talk about the product, what you guys are selling. Is it the data center? What is the product? How do people yeah. use it? How is it deployed and consumed? Yeah. Price, all the, give, give the specifics of the, yeah. of the, yeah. of the actual product. Yeah. So it's a computing platform. Uh, it's an acceleration platform. So it's a PCIe card uh, that we have built. Uh, and today we have started with a PCIe form factor. We can go to other form factors like OAM. But we build the silicon at D-Matrix. So we have built the entire computing silicon at D-Matrix. We have built the acceleration cards to package the silicon together. And uh, we built the software stack that goes along with it to essentially map AI workloads onto the silicon. Yep. So we sell the whole unit along with the software and then we work with you know, partners in the server ecosystem yep. uh, that would essentially you know, put these accelerator cards into their servers and then uh, we can go to data center operators who build out the racks and the cooling. And, but the big difference in the way we go to market is the fact that uh, we take a very collaborative approach with the ecosystem. We are, we are not going in to the data center saying, hey, we got a whole rack, uh, or we are coming in with services or anything of that sort. We build the cards and then we let the customers decide which server vendor they want to work with, how they want to build their racks, what kind of cooling they want, air or liquid. Uh, and that's the flexibility that is so important when it comes to building out an inference computing cluster. Because inference, again, is all about efficiency and cost. And choice, too. And choice, and exactly, it's a lot about choice. And we offer all of that by working collaboratively with the ecosystem. We essentially give customers plenty of choices. Okay, explain the. Um, this is so I get the cards, the PCI cards, the hardware you put into you know, the devices. So inference, obviously, open and choice has become a big theme. I you know you guys are looking at plug and play and making sure you can work with everybody. Yeah. How does that work? Take me through the nuances. So let's just say I'm a customer. 
uh, or, or well, first of all, are your customers the end user? Are your customers the, the OEM manufacturers? <laughs> Split that out for me. Who's the, yeah. who's the buyer of this? So we, we work through the chain. Uh, we, we don't uh, necessarily work directly with our uh, direct touch points uh, because I think inference is still early. Uh, so it's very important to understand the end use cases and uh, making sure that whatever we've built really solves the pain point at the end customer. So we actually prefer to work with the end customers, understanding their pain points, what are they trying to really accelerate when they want to use inference, um, and not all inferences build the same. So you're selling direct to the end user customer. We are directly selling to the end users, and then we kind of work backwards from the uh, end use case. Got it, okay. So and cool. then work with you know the right server partner or the right data center, cloud hosting provider, et cetera. So it's the classic, we've got a great platform, you buy it, you put yeah. it in your environment, and then of course there might be other opportunities for you to work and partner, right, OEM right. and other things. Okay, got it, okay, got it. Yeah. All right, so let's take you through the, um, if I'm a customer and I, yeah. I want to have a Dell, I want to have other vendors in there, it's just on the network, it's just, or is it, how is that, how does that, connect and how do you manage that? So uh, we already are working with multiple system integrators, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, take you know, the standard OEM uh, folks uh, or the ODM folks. So we have many options already on the system integration side. And we announced uh, three at the show, Liquid, um, we announced Giga.io, we announced the Supermicro mm -hmm. uh, as three of our partners and we have others, which we will be announcing as we move forward here. Uh, but there'll be plenty of system integration partners. And again, we are flexible. The way we have built the PCI card we do not need any special server configuration for that card to plug into. Mm -hmm. It is something that is already available as a server configure, pretty standard server config from um, from pretty much a lot of the system integrators. So options are already there. Yeah. And uh, so really it comes down to, you know, what, what is the end user uh, application that the customer is trying to solve for and how we can make them better at that. You know, when we were in Palo Alto, when we had our... Um uh, digital twin event with the NYC Wire community in the Cube. You talked about uh, transforming AI workloads, yeah. um, specifically about unifying the architecture around acceleration of inference. Yeah. Explain that again, because I think and tie that to the news and how the product works. Because I'm okay. You got my attention. Yeah. Inference is the killer app, but there's different inference use cases and yeah. scenarios. I might need different kind of inference for this, and and there's a lot of data involved. So whoever's downstream or upstream on the data. Work. <laughs> it's going to yeah. impact this. Absolutely. But take me through the unification and then how does the product work? Now I'm going to deploy it. Yeah. So the stuff I was touching upon um, when we talked about this in the past was around a kind of a unified model architecture, which was a transformer yeah. architecture. We talked about that. And that emerged in you know, 2017 and by, by I call it you know, 2020, 2021, leading to chat GPT. The transformer architecture essentially had proliferated into multitude of different workloads. Uh, it showed that it is a very scalable architecture. Uh, it is a multi-modal architecture, so it works with different modalities, video, search, text, et cetera, images. And uh, the underlying engine of generative AI inference today runs on transformer-based models, right? Uh, so we have built a solution that is highly optimized for transformers. So in that sense, we are taking advantage of a common architecture and building an inference computing platform that would accelerate all of those models that gives us broad reach uh, with, with our solution. Now, um, coming to the use cases, this is the we, what we announced at the show was an uh, accelerator card, right? Mm -hmm. That is really, really good with what we call low latency batch throughput. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, we hear a lot of people talking about, oh, my latency is really great, but it only works with a single user or we hear about GPUs talking a lot about batching, but they never talk about latency. Yeah. Right. What we have announced is a product that can do batching if it has to. It can certainly do extremely yeah. low latency with single users if it has to, if that's the use case. Yeah. But really what we think the use cases are veering to are the low latency batched use cases, which is, let me give you an example. Yeah. Um, a good example would be something like, you know, video generation. You know, somebody wants to interact with video and create a video in real time. Right now, if you see the way video generation happens, you kind of prompt a model, it takes minutes for the model to generate a video, typically generates 10 seconds of video, you may not like it, you come back, you reprompt the model, you go away, and that way of dealing with video is just not working, right? Yeah. Uh, where we want to go to is a highly interactive model where you're dealing and interacting with video in real time, like you would interact with a, you know, a chat bot, or, or like chat GPT, for instance where it's interactive, where you prompt the model, you get a response, you don't like the response, you prompt it back and it responds back in real time. Yeah. And we are not there with video, right? And the reason for that is memory bandwidth, memory compute, uh, memory capacity 
uh, is a real problem. Uh, GPUs today don't solve that problem. Um, what we have done is we have essentially created a class of memory that is tightly coupled to compute that allows for these kind of interactive video applications to get created. And you typically will never have a single user uh, working with these applications. You have a batch, a collection of users. So multi-user, low latency. Right, we want to create a use case yeah. where you can have multiple users all interacting with the model simultaneously, but not having to sacrifice the latency for each user. So you're an accelerating situation, not offload. Or we are accelerating. We are accelerating. Yeah. Uh, we would be accelerating the video inference use case. Got it. All right. And what are the, some of the other use cases? To okay, let me ask the question differently. What problem do I have if I'm the customer that I? What's signs in my environment? tell me that I need to talk to you and get your product. Is it the latency, is it the batch piece, or is it just I got certain configurations? When do I know to call D-Matrix up right. for some more? That's an excellent for, that's an for excellent saving question. the day. That's an excellent <laughs> Basically, because you, you yeah. become, an, you're an accelerant. Yeah, yeah. So if you're dealing with any kind of use case that you need, first of all, number one priority for you would be if you're dealing with a use case where you have multiple users, where they're all interacting with the model, but uh, the interactivity with the model is not where you need it to be, right? Like slow. Like it's very slow, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. It's very slow, and you yeah. say, you know what? AI can't be slow. Yeah, AI cannot be slow, and it's affecting my user experience. Users yeah. don't want to stay on the application because they don't like the user experience. So that would be the first, you know, first time you pick up the phone and call us, right? Say, I've got a problem, I've got yeah. many users trying to access this, and really the user experience sucks, and can yeah. you help me make it better? So we'd come in there. Now all of that eventually, you know, is we need to go solve that problem first. That's problem number one. Problem number two would be, once we solve that problem, okay, how much does it really cost me to serve each user, right? Uh, so cost is a very big ingredient, Huge. right? Uh, yeah. Because you want uh, many, many users to be able to use this, and as more users use it, it becomes, you know, yeah. the, you know the cost you know, escalates, and you need to have a fundamentally different way of doing compute that keeps costs very low, and we have solved that problem too, just the way we build the platform. And then the third thing would be energy efficiency. So you say, okay, great, now I have a great uh, user experience. Because I have a great user experience, a lot of users want to use it. Guess what? I'm going to be spending a lot of power you know, and energy because I'm trying to support many users. Are you energy efficient? Can you do more inferencing in a given power envelope compared to a GPU? And we can do that too. So I think it's one, two, and three. Number one, user experience. Number two, cost. Number three, energy efficiency. That's a really great way to kind of describe, because a lot of times people don't know where they're paying. They have a lot of pain right now. Yeah. I mean, I, when I say good pain, by the way, you know, no pain, no gain, as they say in, 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 in sports, right? So that's a good call out. I want to ask you about one other thing that's come up on theCUBE that, that is um, going to be part of reInvent, a lot of the conversations at, at Amazon Web Services Conference. Resource allocation also is an issue because now you have multiple systems mm -hmm. coming to each other, um, and the cost piece is tied to that too. So it's not about cost optimization, it's just knowing about just overall cost, because, I mean, even go back in the old school routing days, you have least cost routing, I mean, quality of service, I mean, we're in a quality of service game now. Yes. You're accelerating, yes. you can't be slow. Yep. Inference is a killer app, yep. and the answer or prompt can't be slow, because the next one's coming. Right. That's, it's, it's a fatal flaw right. of AI. Yeah. Uh, networking and yep. speed, yep. and is the job complete? Yeah. Never mind the fact that the GPU's got to do all that work too. Right, right. So what's the resource conversation? Because are people talking about that? Because you accelerate, great, but what's required? Yeah. I mean, what other things do I have to do around the solution or is it truly not disruptive in the sense I got to spend more over here? Or maybe the question is, what's the requirements yeah, yeah. for you guys to have this? And what's my forecast of my job? Am I have to do other things? Yeah, um, that's yeah. what I would be thinking about. Yeah, What's yeah. your answer to that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the other thing that we uh, talked about when we announced our product is how we do really well uh, with 100 billion per, you know, parameter models inside a single rack. So that's the target. We are going, we, what we are saying is 100 billion in a rack. We can do models that are 100 billion in a rack and we can do them better than anyone else on the three things that we talked about, which is uh, the user experience, which is yeah. interactivity, cost, and uh, power efficiency and energy efficiency. Uh, every enterprise customer that we have spoken to, most of them at least, uh, feel that their AI journeys are starting with models in that size bucket. They feel 100 billion is plenty. Yep. And that can fit in a single rack. And one of the reasons we did that was uh, 
you know, as you go across racks and you need a lot of hardware and you need to yep. scale out, uh, the complexity of the problem grows. And do you really need to take on that complexity? What are you really solving with yep. that complexity? Um, in our opinion, you don't really need that complexity for most customers. Yeah. Because most customers are like, hey, look, I, my AI journey starts with models that are a lot smaller than 100 billion. If you can fit that in a rack, I don't need to go across many, many different racks. Now, not that we cannot go across racks, we can certainly go solve that problem yeah. and we can do models that are much larger than 100 billion, but what is the target customer opportunity around those much larger models? And we yeah. think it is not as big, uh, at least right now. So you put time. your card in the machine where the models are, right, and then and it does its job, that's it. That's it, it, it sits inside that rack and okay. it does its job and we think it serves a lot of customers. So they got to ask you because this comes up a lot, certainly in this crowd at Supercomputing 24, I mean, this is, everyone knows what inference is. Yeah. But sometimes people don't really know where in the, in, in the interaction inference does. If people can understand with training, they yeah. have a bunch of data to train and figure it out. Yeah. I'm oversimplifying it, obviously. When you get to inference, what is inference? Is it just a query, a prompt? Is it doing other things? How would you explain to an average person in tech what inference is? Is it getting smarter, doing some, some training? Is it reinforced learning? Is it just a pro? Is it getting a better answer? What does inference do? Yeah, How would yeah. you describe inference? I like to use uh, <laughs> an analogy that I use quite often, and hopefully that helps your uh, listeners, right? Uh, which is, uh, it's not very different from us uh, human beings uh, getting educated and applying our knowledge, right? So we spend the first 20 years of our uh, lifetime going to school and college, you know, depending on where you go to school and college, you can spend a lot of money doing it, but you, you know, acquire uh, learning for the first 20 years. That's training. And that's training, that's training. And then the next 40 years of your life, all you're really doing is applying that knowledge. And of course, you're learning, you know, stuff along the way. That's what they call, you know, fine tuning. You're kind of, you know, specializing in certain areas. Uh, but most of the time, you're really applying everything that you acquired in the first 20 years. And you're monetizing that education. That is inference. And clearly, we spend a lot more time doing quote unquote application of our knowledge or working, yeah. which is inference, than the training part. So the inference opportunity is obviously much larger yeah. than the training part. And really, that's really the same analogy that applies with AI computing. You train a model, you make it learn, and then you use it and to monetize the data, yeah. uh, make decisions with the data that you already have. I actually use that example, Sid. I, I, um, I leveraged that example you said on theCUBE in the yeah. last event. And someone said, yeah, unless you're in academia, then you're constantly being trained. That's go, well, those are the models that just no one uses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. Yeah. Um, but let's get back to inference. First of all, great explanation. Yeah. So we're inferring, which means yeah. I'm calculating, yeah. connecting dots, and my brain's working. Yeah. What's the technical version of that? What's going on that makes the acceleration needed? Is it the math? Is it calculating? So how is inference happening? How can you, how can you explain that piece? Um, and why is it hard? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is hard for multiple reasons, right? Uh, first of all, I think so. So let's take a step back, right? Uh, the the math, the underlying math is, it is, in many senses, it's very similar to training. The only difference here is training has these recursive passes where you do a forward pass on the model, where you take the data, you train the model, you hope that the model has learned. Many, in most cases, it won't learn in the first pass, so you recursively go back, you correct a few things, and you start again, yeah. and you keep doing that over and over again right, till the model starts converging and you get to a point where you know that the model has learned. In inference, you don't need to do that. In inference is basically what you do is take the data and you're essentially running it through the model in a forward pass and all the model has to do is make a bunch of decisions, right? So there's a lot of math, there's underlying math is, you know, there is matrix math, there is uh, what we call uh, nonlinear math that is the neural network mathematics of getting to a decision Yep. Uh, that is what inference, yeah. uh, you know. And that's what's cranking out the, the, the GPU so cycle. So there's just a lot of compute. Yeah. There's a lot of compute as yeah. you are doing a lot of that, you know, math, those mathematical operations. Yeah. But there is a lot of access to memory because yeah. what you're doing is you're essentially taking data, you're taking context, you're storing that context, uh, you're remembering yeah. the query that, you know, when you query a model, um, the model is remembering every query that you put out there. So it's kind of yeah. keeping a state of all of that. So you need a lot of access to memory. Yeah. So memory bandwidth, memory capacity, and a lot of compute, three things. So what you gr do great to have you back on theCUBE again. You got the silicon, which is really critical. That's great. Yeah. That's a differentiator. I'm sure you got tons of patents, uh, all that funding. I'm sure you got to defend that. But again, this is just going to be more headroom. PC, PC I card today, yep. tomorrow, what's next? Hint. So we are going to we are going to we are going to grow from here. I think our story, the Dmatrix story, has always been about very tight compute and memory integration, because we really feel the generative AI inference problem is all about 
three things again, I want to repeat them. Lots of compute, yep. access to memory bandwidth and memory capacity. So the best platforms and solutions will be the one that put compute and memory together in a very creative way. Tightly so coupled. We, tightly coupled. And we're yep. going to keep growing our roadmap in that direction and we have lots more to come in the okay. coming Congratulations, you D Matrix launches here at SC24. We've got the scoop here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back.